Hello everyone, it's Eric Thor here, and in today's video we're talking about 16 personalities and neurodivergence. What's the difference between having ADHD and being an ENFP, or having autism and being an ISTJ? What's the difference between HSP and being an introvert? A lot of the theories in MBTI are based on psychologist Carl Jung's work on the cognitive functions, but the MBTI is different from the Carl Jung's work because Carl Jung didn't really work with personality types and simply tried to explain some of the traits and some of the differences and variations in how people might think and see the world. His theory was not meant to be some kind of Rosetta Stone on personality, explaining everything about the human psyche and how we think. And the truth is, Carl Jung had many fascinating theories about the psyche that went beyond the traditional eight cognitive functions. Now, the MBTI is different from Carl Jung's theories in that it was meant to help people find a job and to track people's motivations and values. So what does it, MBTI have to do with neurodivergence? Well, the first assumption people tend to have is that neurodivergence and giftedness and ADHD and autism and narcissism and many of the differences in how we think and how we process information, how we process empathy, how we do all these things, right? are connected to a person's personality type. And so a lot of studies have been done suggesting that perhaps ENFPs are more likely to have ADHD, perhaps ESFPs are more likely to have ADHD, perhaps INTJs are more likely to be autistic and so on. But what I've found is the case is that neurodivergence goes and explores a different dimension of personality and psychology than what the MBTI tracks. And so the MBTI is a theory of motivational preferences and values, while neurodivergence is a theory on function and development. When we speak about neurodivergence, we mean people that have developed to think and act in a way that is different than what the normal is. And that means also the normal for an ENFP or the normal for an ISTJ, or a person that is and has a certain set of motivations and preferences. I've spent more than a decade studying the 16 personalities and I met people with ADHD with all kinds of personalities and with all kinds of motivations. And we can't here assume that every single person with ADHD will have a similar set of interests or motivations. And in fact, if you have a hundred people with ADHD sit in a room together, you'll probably find that all of them have their own unique interests, motivations and their own temperament and how they process information. Similarly, we can't assume that every person that's autistic will process information the same way or will share the similar set of hobbies or motivations. You'll meet ISTJs, you'll meet INFPs, you'll meet ENFPs with autism. All of these personal types can be autistic. And the truth is, you can be both autistic and have ADHD at the same time. But Eric, if that's true, how come so many people with ADHD identify as ENFPs? Okay, so it might be that a lot of people with ADHD look at the ENFP diagnosis to get help to understand why they have the traits that they do. But the truth is, most of these people would be better helped by talking to a psychologist about their struggles than by looking at the ENFP personality type description to understand themselves. Because the truth is, most people with ADHD tend to have significant difficulties when it comes to managing their attention and with regulating their executive functions. And many of them need help, support systems, or a therapist or medication in order to manage day-to-day -day tasks like paying your bills on time, cleaning your room, or being able to keep up with everyday tasks that most people can do without issue. Being an ENFP means having an ENFP preference, means enjoying being outgoing, enjoying new ideas, enjoying being around people, and enjoying flexibility. But it does not entail or mean that you necessarily have to have issues with organization, with being on time, with being by yourself, or with handling practical everyday tasks, or dealing with logical shores or things like that. Similarly, you might run into a lot of people that confuse being introverted with being highly sensitive, assuming that when a person is highly sensitive, it's because they are introverted and so on. But the truth is, there's lots of introverts that are not highly sensitive, and there's lots of extroverts that are highly sensitive, and that can really confuse a person when it comes to typing themselves. 
And because of this, you have a lot of extroverted, highly sensitive people that are really confused because they really enjoy outgoing <laughs> activities, but at the same time get very easily overstimulated and don't really know how to manage or process that. And just like with ADHD, if you feel like the struggles that you have when it comes to managing overwhelm and overstimulation are so big that it makes it difficult for you to have normal relationships or to go out and handle everyday tasks like being at work, you definitely need to have a conversation with somebody that is educated on the topic and that is able to help you evaluate and support you through those difficulties. In some ways, we're more educated than ever when it comes to topics related to psychology. And most people today have some base awareness of psychological problems and struggles. And we talk more than ever about psychological topics. At the same time, people seem unwilling to go and ask for help and to take action on their issues and don't really know or have a clue about how to manage or deal with these things. And with many of these problems, masking is a real issue and a lot of people have psychological imposter syndrome in a sense that they feel that, you know, oh yeah, I do have a lot of problems, but at the same time, lots of people have problems, right? And, you know, yes, it's, I haven't really had a relationship in 10 years and uh, don't really leave the house much, but at the same time, you know, who doesn't? The goal of the Myers-Briggs type indicator is to describe healthy differences and variations in personality, not to describe significant struggles, traumas, or issues that cause and make it difficult for you to live a normal life or to adjust to everything that we are supposed to be doing in these <laughs> complicated societies, right? And here's the thing. You'll be hard pressed to find an ENFP that enjoys cleaning their room or organizing folders, but you'll find that most ENFPs can organize documents and can show up on time if they need to. The problem is they're not motivated to, right? And with ADHD, the problem is completely different. Many people with ADHD very much want to and enjoy these tasks, but don't know how to get themselves started, don't know how to manage their energy, don't know how to prioritize between tasks, don't know how to use their executive function to guide themselves to deal with and pick up on something in a logical order, right? And that's the struggle. And the truth is, yes, this can be a grayscale. This can be a spectrum. You'll find people that have some difficulties. You'll find people that have average level difficulties. You'll find people that have above average level difficulties. You'll find people that are significantly struggling with these tasks. And so what you have to ask yourself is, to which extent does this impair my everyday ability to function? To which extent do I find myself struggling with this to a level where it significantly impairs my ability to have normal relationships with other people or to manage everyday tasks or chores at work, right? How much do you feel like you're struggling with this and do you feel yourself that you need help with these things or that you could benefit from getting support for these matters? If you feel that way, don't be afraid to reach out to a trained psychologist to talk and have a conversation on the matter. And definitely, if you have significant struggles with these things, don't just shrug your shoulders and say, well, I guess it's just a personality type, too bad, and then go back to bed, right? Because in those circumstances, there are lots of resources and support systems and organizations available to help you with these tasks in a way, way better than what the 16 personalities ever could hope to. And so something that I really want everyone to know is you can definitely explore both the 16 personalities and neurodivergence, but you should always consider them to be separate. And you should think about how your neurodivergence might impair or might make it more complicated for you to determine your personnel type. And you definitely need to consider that the MBTI is primarily about motivation, while neurodivergence is primarily about how your brain works. And yeah, that's just my opinion. Feel free to let me know what you think about these later issues on the comments down below. And if you wanna help me study these things or have any resources to recommend, do send them my way because 
For this month, I'm spending a lot of time researching neurodivergence and different forms of neurodivergence because this is something I really want to know more about. Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video.